solving trig equations today. Um, so if you will recall, every function that we've talked about so far, we have solved them. Quadratics, polynomials, uh, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, rational functions, radical functions. We have looked at all of those as equations and we have found their solutions. So we're going to do the same thing with trig equations today. Um, so there are some very simple ones, uh, like number one, okay, we are going to find uh, the solutions for this equation between zero and two pi. Okay, so we're only talking about angles that are on the unit circle between zero and two pi, so we're not going to include negative angles, we're not going to include angles that are more than one rotation. Okay, so my question is, right here for example number one, where is the sine of an angle equal to negative one half? So if I'm solving this, the question I ask myself is, okay, my trig function is sine, which coordinate is sine? No, which coordinate? Y, sine is your Y coordinate. So I'm looking on my unit circle for where the Y coordinate is negative one half. There will be two places where that occurs. What are the two places where the Y coordinate is negative one half? 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Okay, it is negative, so it makes sense that I'm looking in the third and the fourth quadrants because that's where my y coordinates are negative. And sine is equal to 1 half at your pi over 6 angle. So those are the two solutions to this equation. Guess what? It's an equation. You can check your solutions. Now yesterday we put our calculators in degree mode, so you need to put them back in radian mode because I always want the answers in radians. But all you have to do is type in sine of 7 pi over 6 and press enter, and it gives you negative 0.5, which is negative 1 half. If you type in 11 pi over 6, it'll give you the exact same uh, answer. Okay? Now, that's very, very simple. Let's look at, well, what if we've got some stuff outside of the trig function? So it's just like with all our other equations, exponentials, logarithms, um, uh, uh, there's something else where we have to isolate um, that expression. Same thing here. You have to isolate that trig expression before you can go anywhere. Um, so we've got to get that sine of theta by itself. Right now it's being multiplied by negative 3 over 2. So how can we move that negative 3 over 2? Divide or multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, I'd really like for us to get in the habit of doing that. So the reciprocal of this is negative two-thirds. So that gives us two square roots of three over three is equal to the sine of theta. Now, on our unit circle, does the sine of theta ever equal two square roots of three over three? No. Okay. Sine of theta never equals that. That is a, that's an answer we might get for like secant or cosecant but we're never going to get that for sine. Um, so if you ever run into that, you need to check and see, well, what is the value of that number? What is 2 square root of 3 over 3? And when you look at it, it's a number bigger than 1. Sine and cosine will never be bigger than 1 or less than negative 1. Okay? Their maximum values occur um, at the top of the unit circle or the bottom of the unit circle or the left and right if you're talking about cosine. So it's never anything bigger than 1 or negative 1. There's no way for the sine of an angle to equal 2 square root of 3 over 3. So sometimes we do have no solution for these equations. Okay, There is no solution for this equation. Now if you'll recall, um, back to play some trig and math 2 and math 3, uh, you could also find the angle here by doing the inverse trig. Okay, you can do the inverse sine of 2 squared to 3 over 3. The reason why I didn't mention this is because this is what happens when you do it for this problem. Um, I forgot where my square root button was there for a second. It's going to give you an error, and the error is the domain. Okay, and that's what I was talking about. The sine is never going to be greater than or less than. Uh, positive or negative 1, um, so you can't do the inverse sine of 2 square root of 3 over 3. So that's another reason why there's no solution. Okay? 
All right, let's look at one that has a lot of stuff going on. Okay, we got stuff outside of the tree function, and we got stuff inside the tree function. This is number 16 on your paper. We got 4 minus 1 fourth of the cosine of theta plus pi over 3 is equal to 7 over 2. Okay, a lot of stuff going on. First thing that I need to address, because I know somebody's going to want to do this, is they're going to want to do 4 minus 1 fourth. Cannot do that because the 1 fourth is attached to the cosine. Cannot combine those two terms right there. So your first move here should be to subtract the 4 from both sides. Now, I'm getting ready to subtract 4 from 7 halves, so I'm going to express 4 as 8 over 2, just so I can do this by hand without a calculator. Okay, um, so that gives me negative 1 fourth cosine of theta plus pi over 3 is equal to negative 1 half. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. Okay, next move, what should we do? Divide. Or multiply. multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply both sides by negative 4. So we get the cosine of theta plus pi over 3 is equal to positive 2. Negative 1 half times negative 4 is positive 2. Now, we've got the cosine of theta plus pi over 3 is equal to 2. What did I just say a second ago? Cosine and sine can't be greater than 1. Okay, they can't be greater than 1. So this is another example of there being no solution. Because the cosine and sine cannot be greater than 1 or negative 1. So if they got some plus in there, does that automatically make it solution? No, it's not. It's not because of the plus pi over 3. It's because the cosine of something is equal to 2 okay. is why there's no solution. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's look at number 21. Okay, number 21. Talking about tangents. Talking about tangent. So I asked you to write down the values of tangent for the first quadrant there so that you could reference them. Which angle is the tangent equal to the square root of 3? Pi over 3. Pi over 3, okay. So theta is equal to pi over 3. Now where else would tangent be equal to the positive square root of 3? Uh, 2 pi over 3. Nope. Not in the second quadrant. Oh, second quadrant. Oh, four pi over three. Four pi over three. The pi over three angle in the third quadrant. Because tangent sine over cosine, so when they have the same signs, the tangent is going to be positive, which is what we want. Um, so that's in the first and in the third quadrant. It's pi over three and four pi over three. Okay, now, 23 looks kind of nasty, but it's really not that bad, okay, because it's got that weird expression on the, on the right side, um, but the same premise still applies. We need to subtract 4, but I'm getting ready to subtract it from something over 3, so I'm going to express 4 as 12 over 3. So we have the tangent of theta is equal to, we've got 12 plus the square root of 3 over 3 minus 12 over 3. 12 minus 12 is 0, okay? So we have the tangent of theta is equal to the square root of 3 over 3. So if our pi over 3 angles gave us the square root of 3, wouldn't it be our pi over 6 angles that would give us square root of 3 over 3? Okay, it's the invert, or not the invert, but the reciprocal. Okay, so pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. The angle in the third quadrant. Uh, let's look at one more because I didn't realize that I picked one that had no solution. I want to do one that has something else inside uh, with the angle. So let's do another tangent. Let's do 25, okay? Let's do number 25. 25 says 2 plus the tangent of negative 2 theta. I prefer for that to be in parentheses personally, but 
anyways. <clears throat> okay, so let's solve this. Subtract 2 from both sides. So we have the tangent of negative 2 theta is equal to negative 1. So the question is, where is the tangent equal to negative 1? Uh, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Now, I'm writing it like this because we don't just have just theta, okay? We have negative 2 theta. And all the other problems we have, we've had just theta inside there. So once you get that answer, you need to set it equal to negative 2 theta. And you need to solve for theta now. So we need to multiply by negative 1 half. So theta is negative 3 pi over 8 for the first one, which, no, it's not on our unit circle, but that's okay. Every once in a while you will get an answer that's not actually on the unit circle. And negative 7 pi over 8. Now, are these angles bigger or smaller than... 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. They're smaller, okay? Uh, 3 pi over 8 is smaller than 3 pi over 4. So what we've just done is we have shrunk these angles because of that negative 2. So what we're going to have, we're actually going to have more than just two solutions here. Okay, we're going to have more than two solutions here. So what I'm going to do is, and the other thing is our answers are supposed to be between 0 and 2 pi. Are these between 0 and positive 2 pi? No, because no, they're negative, right? They're negative. So, um, we can, first of all, we can fix that by finding a coterminal angle, right? Uh, so, let's find their positive coterminal angles by adding 19 pi over 8, because we add 2 pi. All right, so that gives us 16 pi over 8. And uh, 12 pi over 8, which reduces, both of those reduce. Sixteen pi over eight reduces to another. I don't know, because apparently I thought 8 times 2 was 19. Okay, I was like, that's not working out right. Okay, thank you. Guess what? Miss Redmond gets things wrong too sometimes. <laughs> 16 pi over 8. Did I say 16 and write 19, or did I say 19? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, 13 pi over 8 is what we should have gotten. And I don't know why I was thinking 19. I don't know where that came from. Uh, 9 pi over 8. Okay. Now, so those are two solutions. This one actually has four solutions. Okay. And it has to do with the fact that we had negative 2 theta. So we're going to have two, two times as many answers as we would have originally. So since our angles shrunk when we solve for theta, then that means we also need to include um, um, angles that are bigger than 2 pi originally. Okay, So I need to add 2 pi to 3 pi over 4. All right, hang on, let me, let me back up. Okay, so <clears throat> we found where the tangent was equal to negative 1, right? 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, okay? But it wasn't just the tangent of theta. It was the tangent of negative 2 times theta. So when we solve for theta, we divide it by 2 or multiply by negative 1 half. So our answers got smaller. So, to make sure that we get all the answers between 0 and 2 pi, then we need to find two more solutions here 